everyone and welcome to another video from this series that is dedicated to learning from other master photographers. Today I'm going to talk about photos from photographer Clyde Butcher and before I start showing you some photos and discussing a little bit why I think these photos look so good, I will tell you a few things about Clyde Butcher. Now Clyde Butcher um, initially wanted to be an architect. But around 1970, he realized that he's better doing landscape photography than architecture. So he started his own landscape photography business. And he was pretty successful. He was doing color photos. And he had the chance of a partnership with some major stores in the US because he's a photographer from the United States. And uh, at some point, I think he managed to have over or around 200 employees. So he's doing really great. Now, in 1986, a tragedy happened to his life. His son was killed in a car accident. He was the passenger of a car that got hit by another car that was driven by a drunk driver. And this tragic moment in his life, sadly sad, or triggered the best work of Clyde Butcher. He basically retreated himself from everything he went into florida into the the swamps of everglades and he started doing landscape photography with a large camera format only in black and white and the prints are huge the prints are made by himself and they are really big and he's saying that by printing nature that big you can really have a really sense of uh, of nature and uh, he's doing photography in swamps and he's saying that movies made swamps places of horror and i'm trying to show you the beauty in these places so let's see some photos what i think this photo is about it's it's about the shape of the cloud and the the reflection and this is uh, this is kind of showing me that if you're doing reflections then your photo should be simple and if you have uh, such a great cloud you should try and find the surface where it will somehow reflect because you don't have a really calm water you don't have a really calm reflection or a complete symmetry by uh, having a clear reflection but it, it's not necessarily about that because the reflection doesn't have to be perfect it's it's a reflection it gets distorted by the ripples of the water and the thing that it's really interesting here it's the shape of the cloud and the way he isolates this by darkening so heavily the this part of the sky over here uh, and in 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 other photos we will also see clouds taking a big place in his photos but remember whenever you have interesting cloud formations to to try and compose the scene for example in a reflection or how you will see in other scenes uh, something like this where we have an opening this, the, the entire photo is about how huge this cloud is this is what makes this photo interesting and this is what makes this photo work I think without this cloud we will have a simple landscape it's just some grass and some trees but this cloud really makes the scene interesting because you realize how huge this cloud really is. Again, you have to uh, notice the darkness uh, of the sky, and this is not an easy thing to achieve in, uh, in digital photography. Uh, I mean, it's easy to darken the sky, but it's not easy to darken the sky and having no, um, no aberration in in, uh, in chroma not, not not having bending in your gradients it's not easy to achieve in digital photography and also take notice how you can see the details inside the clouds here you can you can really see how um, how the how the cloud uh, it's it's formed another simple photo where you have uh, a woodland or a, a forest of some kind of trees but then you have an interesting formation of a, of a cloud over here and the moon it's uh, it's a full moon it, it's almost a photo that reminds me of 
uh, Moonrise over Hernandez by Ansel Adams. It's it's something that kind of kind of goes me with the thought uh, to that photo. And again, you see the darkening of the sky. And this darkening of the sky in an area where there are no clouds, you can regard it as um, a stop for the eye a way to, to stop you from looking over here and to concentrate your look in this area. Remember all these photos are made on a large format camera and the editing is done during the developing process. It's not something that you can fully control. It's, uh, you can search on, uh, on YouTube for videos of Clyde Butcher in his dark room and you'll see the technique that he's, uh, he's using to uh, lighten some of these areas and to darken some other areas and you will understand that this is not an easy process to do, to do. now we see a photo of um, of a mountain and what I think I've learned from this is that uh, high contrast can give you or can concentrate your look onto uh, the subject that you want to portray for example here we have the forest that it's in front of the of the mountain we have the sky and we don't have clouds in the sky and that is why I think he darkens this upper part of the sky there's a lot of haze I can tell from that because there is not a lot of definition and there's not lots of contrast in this area over here but I'm pretty sure that there's some kind of a hill or some kind of a mountain over here that blocks the light of the Sun and I think it's it's, it's really um, useful to know that by including this outline this silhouette you add another layer to the image and you create the sense of depth and you also give it perspective and you realize how big and far away this mountain really is this is again uh, the same technique by um, darkening some of the areas and to position yourself in a way that you have this kind of a darkness at the base of the photo and then comes the subject and then you have some clouds and then after clouds are finished you have a darkening uh, in the sky just to keep the eye of uh, the viewer in this area keep it simple it's a, it's a thing that in landscape photography it's often overlooked uh, and that is why it's difficult to work with really wide uh, lenses starting from 17 millimeter and going down to 16 to 14 uh, it's really difficult to work because these lenses capture all uh, all those elements in them and um, you need to decide what it's really important for your photo and what it's not and that is what separates a good photo from a bad one and I showed you uh, last Monday in the work of Michael Kenna how minimal you can go this is some something that reminds me of of uh, Michael Kenna's work having a single tree in the photo and some great clouds in the background now this is a, a photo done in the forest and I think that photos in the forest are the most difficult one to do and the reason for that is that the forest is really chaotic uh, vegetation grows everywhere and Finding order in all that chaos takes a lot of concentration and lots of practice. And in this uh, in this photo, I really like how he used this branch and the 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 foreground as a way of framing these two trees and the clouds in the back. By having such a big branch over here, it kind of blocked the eye from the rest of the chaos and kind of leads you to these two trees that in uh, we can't say that are uh, perfectly ordered there are just two trees and a, a horizontal line and it, it looks great now another thing that you have to notice is the difference in light tones here we have a little bit of darkness 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 and here where the subject is we have light and then we have the clouds that are uh, that are pretty light now let's take a look at some of his photos this is a, uh, a thing that I've learned by looking at black and white images is that you can make a flower or some elements in vegetation really pop by converting the image to black and white and altering the color channels in uh, different ways and you can see how these uh, flowers really pop I think this, these are wild lilies but 
can't be 100% sure because I I don't know the plants really well but take a look at how well these flowers are seen in, uh, in all this vegetation and for example these are wild uh, orchards I think and in this case the flowers are, are placed right in the middle of the photo yeah and and still this image works and I think the reason for which it, uh, these image uh, this image works is that you have a complete darkness and then you have a diagonal from this trunk tree that it's not exactly in the center of the of the image and by having that slightly to the left it kinds offset the entire image to do this photo for example I know that he uh, went using a ladder you have to understand that the swamps of Everglades means that you stay in the water uh, half of your body is in water and you need to photograph by using a large camera format take a look in, on YouTube and search some of, uh, of the videos and see in what conditions this man works and you, that that I think will make you really um, into this war into his work and you will appreciate more the, uh, the work by seeing the effort that he's putting in creating these uh, these photos and another uh, another photo of a flower and again you have the same thing the purity of the flower that it's almost white you can see some of the details but then you have the blackness around it then we have a simple photo of a forest we we kind of see order in this first of all I'm uh, I'm seeing that he's using some of the trees as block elements these trees are guardians these trees are here to uh, do not let your eye escape to the sides and then you have uh, this patch of clear water because all or all you can see is water but this, this is vegetation on top of the water and only here the water is clear and you have a certain um, a certain diagonal that kind of leads the eye towards here now another thing that he's doing is photographing this I think this is my own opinion I think it's because you have a clear a clearance in the forest so you have light that it's coming down uh, in this area and because of this I shown you in in my uh, vlogs when I photographed forests that I'm also explo uh, exploiting this because here the light has a value and over here it's about half a stop or one stop darker and this way you create a difference in uh, tonal values and you have the eye uh, in this area over here this photo I think you have to see the beauty of layers and these layers are vertical you have a patch of water that kind of reflects the clouds over here then and then you have and that is a little bit darker than the next layer that is it's uh, it's formed by some grass and then you have a patch of trees that you can concentrate on because it's uh, um, in the, in the background of these trees that are darker you have the clouds and then you have the dark of the sky but all these elements because they are in uh, in in reflection and in symmetry work as a frame uh, or a stage for these trees over here another photo is this where you see the ripples of the water how many of us would be tempted in a situation like this to do a really long exposure calm the water down and have that famous black and white image with the water calm down and the, and the clouds in, in movement now he's doing the, th uh, the opposite he is really using the ripples or the small waves of the water to to kind of uh, add some texture to this entire area that if you do a long exposure exposure would be completely white and the last photo of uh, this talk would be this where he is using the vegetation as foreground element and um, you see this shape in the vegetation I think it's because he is using a really wide lens because other leaves are perfectly rounded and because of these are oval I think it's because of the wide angle lens and you kind of have this feeling of leading the eye towards these clouds
This was it from today and I really hope that you find inspiration in this great photographer Clyde Butcher. Now if you're not here please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. Remember to click the bell icon near the after you click subscribe because this way you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. And if you are already subscribed, thanks for watching, thanks for commenting, thanks for supporting me. And for all of you, until next time, keep on photographing. It's the only way that you can get better. Bye bye.